Good morning. Welcome to the lake. Came out for an early morning paddleboard session. It's not windy, there's just some birds out. I'm nearly sure I just saw a bald eagle. Absolutely beautiful. He's huge. I saw a really big bird flying over the lake this morning and I was like, that is a huge bird. Actually a bald eagle, I think. Is that a bald eagle? You guys tell me. He's got a white head. I don't know what else he would be. The guy camping a couple spots down from me said that there's some really good fishing in this lake. Apparently back in the 1980s, somebody caught like a 48 inch trout in this lake. I'm tempted to fish, but I really want to get to this hot spring before it gets too late. And I did come to Oregon to find hot springs and waterfalls. <laughs> Today I'm going to be bringing you into the forest to a hot spring that I read about on the internet that has a lot of history behind it. It's split by a river so there should be a hot spring on either side. This is the first side. Let's head down the path and see what we can find. Check out this trail. Absolutely beautiful. There's so many ferns. It's so green. Rivers, trees, moss. Another uprooted tree. I've seen a lot of these lately. This one's been here so long that there's moss growing all over it. And I think that's a second uprooted tree. See, look how huge this tree is. This is a tree. Oh my goodness, it's so long. Look at these mushrooms. They're so cool. If you want to talk one-on-one -on -one and see more exclusive content, make sure you go to patreon.com slash Straight. In 1878, a trapper came upon these springs and built a cabin and lived there until the early 1900s. Shortly after, the United States Forest Service came to be and promptly told him he had to go. Reluctantly, he left. But shortly after, another gentleman found a loophole and filed a mineral claim on the land. Never intending to mine any of the minerals in the area, he only wanted to build a resort. He leased the land from the Forest Service and opened a hotel in 1914. These pools are interesting because they're right on the river. There's really hot pockets of water coming out of the ground mixed with really cold water from the river. Kind of makes a warm pool. It's nice. I prefer the hotter ones though. Still a beautiful view. The history of this place dates back so far. Sometime after, a Portland baseball player came upon the resort and bought the hotel and used it as a retreat for his baseball club. Eventually, it became a popular destination for tourists, a resort community with a store, hotel, and cabins. It changed ownership several times over the years and eventually burned down in the late 1950s. The Forest Service nullified any leases and removed any trace of establishment that was left. Occasionally today, the river will rise in level and wash out the pools that are built along the banks. And they'll gradually get rebuilt as visitors come and go enjoying a soak. You can still see some of the stone remains of the resort. And it's fun to imagine the simplicities of life then. I wish I could see more of the remains of the resort, 
and the life they built with this little spot on the river. But I'm glad that it still exists today. These pools are very easy to access, some are quite hot and others pleasantly warm. They're shallow, but some of the cleaner hot springs I've seen. No trash, and very well picked up. A perfect place to relax, reminisce, and soak in nature's pools. Hi friend! You're furry and fun. Time to head back, find my camp spot, and enjoy some dinner for the night. <laughs> Just roasting a whole chicken over the fire. What do you think we're having for dinner? <laughs> I'm just joking. This is actually a rotisserie chicken. It's totally cooked. Enough clowning around. Let's go inside my camper and check out what I'm actually making in there. I'll bring my rotisserie chicken with me. So I found this recipe on the internet, this shredded chicken black bean campfire nachos. And the premise is pretty simple. I've not tried it, but I think I can tackle it. You just layer layers of tortilla chips with black beans, shredded chicken, onions, jalapenos, cheese, it's really your choice. And then you let it cook over the campfire for about eight minutes and then you enjoy. Let's get into it. I'm super hungry. I'm using pepper jack cheese. It suggested using sliced cheese just so it doesn't burn quite as easily because the campfire can be really hot. I'm just layering jalapenos, onions. I think I'm gonna need more cheese. You can never have too much cheese. Look at these nachos. I think I made too much. I'm really excited to see how they turn out. <sighs> I'm gonna go throw it on the fire and get it cooking because I'm so hungry. And then after, after it's done cooking, you add on the best part, the tomatoes, the avocado, the cilantro, and you dip it in whatever you'd like, sour cream or salsa. I'm not a huge sour cream fan, so I'm using some salsa. Another night camping by a lake. Seems like nearly half the time I've been in Oregon, I've been sleeping by a lake at night. This time though, this campground isn't totally empty. There's a couple people nearby. Still pretty. Still pretty quiet. Now that my nachos are all dressed up, I'm gonna go outside and enjoy it by the fire. It's a little dark out there, so I'm gonna go by myself. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss next week's adventure, next week's adventure. And I hope this inspired you to get out there and go on your own campfire adventure. Good night. Don't forget to check out patreon.com slash Hannah Strait, or you can try my instant mushroom coffee at drstrait.com.